Go big or go home. Is a GMC 5500 big enough? We'll look at some common faults on this medium duty truck and take a trip to our favorite choke and puke today on Truck U. Get that by yourself? Got it, dude. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice and easy. Now, over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of trucks in the shop. It's pretty cool. A lot of those are like dual purpose trucks, right? Because the guys will work all week with the truck, but they want to be able to tow stuff. A lot of the toys and trailers on the weekend and have some fun. Today's a little bit different. We switch gears. This is a fully dedicated work truck in the shop, and this is pretty cool. Yeah, I think this is the first time we've had a medium duty truck like this in the shop, and it is kind of cool to look underneath the hood because first thing you think is, well, it's an inline six cylinder diesel, but it's nice to see that it's actually a V8. It's a Chevy V8 because I'm a bow tie guy, right. and it's an 8.1 liter or 496 cubic inches. So this thing is a good engine. It makes a lot of power. It's going to be able to pull pretty much anything you want. The issue with it is, though, it's here in the shop, and that's usually not a good thing for the owner. Yeah, he hit us on the CB. He was like, breaker 1-9, fellas. I got some problems. You want to bring it on in? We said, that's a big 10-4, big daddy. Bring it on in, and we'll take a look at it. Now, normally, when we get a truck in the shop, first thing we do is we throw it on the lift, get it up in the air, and crawl underneath it and see what's going on. With something this big, what we want to do is just use that lift to pick up this corner so we can get the wheel off and check out that ABS sensor. Sounds like a plan. Get this out of the way. File that off to the side. You know, the one thing I noticed when we're working on this particular truck, these pieces and parts are a lot bigger and a lot heavier. Well, look at the brake caliper on this thing. I mean, they're huge because ah. it's got big brake pads, it's got a big rotor, it's got a clamp tube because it has a lot of load it has to stop. And you need that when you're pushing over 10,000 pounds or pulling over 10,000 pounds. You want to be able to stop in traffic. Now, the problem is when you have an ABS sensor that goes out, you got big brake pads and you've got the ability to stop this thing on a dime or at least up front and if you do so it's going to want to pull you off the side of the road and that can be dangerous for just about anybody around. All right now most of you know by now what the ABS system is. Now for those of you that don't think about it like this back in the old days when the roads were wet they told you to pump the brakes so you hit them a little bit let off hit them again. That kept you ideally from locking up the tire because if you lock up the tire on a wet road or a dry road all you're doing at that point is sliding and you're not slowing down at all. Well the ABS system does that work for you. Nowadays, if this is all working properly, you stand on the brakes and it slows you down and it doesn't lock up the tire. And if it's working properly, you could literally hit them as hard as you can and it's not going to lock up. Now, one of the key components is this sensor and it's pretty easy to get to. It pulls right off of the side. Now, if you look inside, we kind of cut this away to show you guys. There's a magnet inside here with coil windings wrapped around it. And what it's doing, it's reading off a tone ring that's spinning with the wheel. So what the whole system is trying to do is re read the wheel speed versus the overall speed of the vehicle and make sure that they're all in unison. You, if it's not, it'll make the proper adjustments in the computer and allow you to brake effectively. That's very scientific, right? <laughs> and in that same vein, scientifically, look at all the junk on the end of this thing, and I think that's what's throwing off the reading, right? Yeah, basically you've got a magnet attracting all that junk to the sure. sensor. Well, think about it. You're on the front end of the vehicle. It's got 70,000 miles on it. You're driving through puddles, dirt roads, you name it. All of the conditions are getting washed up right under here. This is right in the middle of the action. And like you said, it's a magnet, so it only stands to reason that we're going to get some junk going on right here. Fortunately, it's an easy fix. We pop it right out, we unplug it, we put the new one in, and we're rolling. One of the nice things about working on a truck like this is accessibility. Now, the next thing on our list is the crank position sensor. And we can get to it nice and easily because from the inside of the cab here, we can get that cover out of the way, that doghouse, that thing's out of the way, and now we have access to the entire back side of the engine. And that's gonna make life a lot easier, especially since we know where that sensor's at. Yeah, I mean, you know, on the light duty trucks, if you were to have to get to something like this, you'd have to take the cab off. You know, I'm really starting to dig these big trucks because <laughs> there's not a lot of fluff, there's not a lot of electronics you gotta deal with, or mats and stuff you can actually get at stuff they're almost made to be worked on i think we should right. take more of these in bro right. we'll bring a couple more in that's fine man what we're doing right now is addressing that crank position sensor
sensor. Now, what happens with these sensors, it's kind of common with these trucks, is they automatically go away on you. And there's no warning, there's no air light, there's no check engine sign, it, the engine just cuts off and it never does it at a good time. No, it's like you're going uphill, you know, it's raining, it's dark out, yeah. and that's just all bad. Yeah, right? you're pulling a 48 foot trailer full of Colorado's best, oh, right? Oh man, you got a bear in the air, you got Smokies on your tail, <laughs> it's all bad, right? Am I sensing a Smokey and the Bandit reference here? Well, hold on, just if we could take a quick break, is there a better movie ever made than Smokey and the Bandit? I say not. This time I can't argue with the kid. No, how could you argue with that? Dude? Great movie, but sorry, I get sidetracked from time. Okay, back to All work. Right. The good thing about this sensor is easy to fix. We're gonna replace it with a new one, just simply a small metric bolt that's gonna mount this thing in place. Now, what the sensor is doing basically is telling the ECU where the crank is in reference to the firing order. So if it can't find where it's located, it's gonna cut off the signal and not send out any spark, the engine cuts off. And believe it or not, that's a good thing because if it shot spark when the thing was in the wrong uh, sequence in terms of firing order, it could actually blow up the engine. So it's a preventative thing, but it's also never a good thing for it to happen. Yeah, I see your point, but yeah, tell that to the guy stuck on the side of the road, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hand with this thing. Bring it on in. Nice job on the sensor. We Thanks, got that bro. out of the way. We'll get this cover back on. And when we come back, we got some more maintenance to do on this big old truck. That's a big 10-4. Love it, dude. Lead acid batteries leak over time and eat away at your battery tray causing a real problem inside your engine. So the next time you have to replace your battery tray, use a battery mat from LMC Truck under the battery to protect the tray for good. Its polypropylene needle punch felt allows the battery mat to trap and contain acid, while the neutralizing agents go to work on getting rid of the effects of the acid. The battery mat will protect the battery tray around the clock. You can also protect your battery from draining down too fast by using a disconnect switch. The switch will disconnect the battery from the entire electrical system and is always good to use if you don't drive your truck every day. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. Restore, maintain, and customize your truck with parts and accessories from LMC Truck. Welcome back to Truck U. Now here's where we're at. ABS sensor replaced, crank position sensor replaced, all sensors cleared. Now it's time to show a little attention to the fluids in this vehicle. And this big dog right here goes through a lot of fluids. Yeah, if you've never had a big truck like this, you're probably not familiar with how much it can, can consume, and especially when you're talking about oil. Now, if you look at the manual, it'll tell you first off that this thing uses about a quart of oil for every 100 gallons of fuel. Now, if you take that thing and throw it to the side, you're gonna be in trouble because before you know it, the at miles are really gonna add up on this thing and you're gonna run this thing low. That's something you definitely don't wanna do. Are you doing math? <laughs> I figured you'd wanna chime math in. Math is kinda of my thing. Now, let's think about it. This truck right here gets about 10 miles to the gallon, right? Yep. So you said 100 gallons, that'd be 1,000 miles. So it's gonna burn through a quart of oil every 1,000 miles. Now, if you're working with this truck and you're doing any kind of serious driving, you're gonna knock down 1,000 miles like it's nothing. So you're gonna be changing the oil all the time. So we can go the route of the expensive synthetics or we can just do what the manufacturer calls for, right? I say we just feed it what the manufacturer calls for because it's going to consume so much it can start getting pretty costly with all the synthetics. Okay. Plus this way you know you're giving it the right oil, it's what they're asking for, you're not going to have any issues. Now one thing you don't want to do is let it get to the warning light because usually at that point it's a little too late. You don't want to starve the crankcase of, of anything really, especially when you're talking about fluids. Here you go. Don't forget to prime that, right? Yeah, you never want to put it in empty. Fill it up with oil, and then you put a little oil around the seal so you don't have any leaks. It'll be good to go. And you said earlier that that headlight is out over there too, right? Yeah, I think he can get that. Yeah, I think he can too. We can't <laughs> possibly hold this guy's hand all the time, right? right? And we don't want to call him just yet because we got to do that delivery later, and I think this will be perfect. I'm with you on that one. We'll hold on to it for a little bit. All right, man. Got it? Uh, yeah. So this is what I was telling you about, the bed for the bed. The what? The bed we're going to put in the bed. Of which truck? That one already has a bed. All right, hold on. Here's where we're at. Your buddy Ricky's got that 73 fleet side. That bed, that truck. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That nightmare. Yeah, it's like 30-some years old. He wanted us to try and patch it up and make 40. it look good. Whatever. Good point. Okay. 
you wanted us to patch it up and make it look good like new and paint it up. But, you know, there was so much work needed to be involved being rusted out that is really too much work to even bother with. Now, he also suggested, hey, you guys can go down to a local boneyard and try and find one that's in decent shape and we'll start with that. But you know what? I like your idea better. Just start from scratch. Listen, this is where our relationship with Brothers Truck Parts comes in real handy because we can call them up, tell them exactly what they need, and they ship it to us. It's going to be a lot easier to take these big puzzle pieces, bolt it all together than it is to do all that bondo work and everything else you were talking about. Yeah, this bed itself will work on 73 to 87 trucks. And one thing you got to keep in mind is little things like that. The gas will need a round one for this bed. Other than that, it's pretty simple. It's just putting the pieces together. All we need to do is get the hardware. I'll grab that and we can get started when we come back. This segment of Truck U is brought to you by CheapCycleParts.com, your online source for motorcycle and ATV parts and gear. Easy to use, easy to save. That's good right there. Welcome back to Truck U. Now, traditionally speaking, when you see us working on a bed, it's attached to the rest of the truck. Things are a little bit different today, but this is nice. It's kind of like putting a big puzzle together. I like it. Yeah, you know, and it comes with an e-coating over all the material because this way you won't have any rust whatsoever. No matter if it's sitting around for a little bit, you don't have to worry. And when it comes time to paint it, all you have to do is scratch it up and you can start shooting. Now, the only issue I have all right, I like the bed, I like the puzzle, the whole bit, but I like the old step side styles, man. Those are so cool looking. An older model truck with a step side on the back, you know, we could have been doing that, but this is cool. I'm well, still down with that. But you get that from that. Brothers as well, as well as you get Absolutely. the short bed, the long bed, you got all the different options to fit all the different vehicles or whatever your taste may be. All the different combinations. So let me all slide right. this in. Ah. Let's pull it a little this way. Good. Get up a little bit. That's where you need to go. Uh, we're right about there. All right. A little finagling, we'll get it together. That'll hold it in place. You know, one of the things you want to start with, the wheel wells, obviously you got to work from the inside out, otherwise the piece of the puzzle will never come together. An engineer buddy of mine once told me that if something's fixed at three points, it should stay where it's at. I think it was something like triangulation. But to be honest, this guy told me a lot of things. That one actually made sense. Though. And the way we did that is by putting a bolt in either end of the wheel well and one in the center and drew it into place. It still kept a little wiggle room. This way we get everything in where it needs to be, button it all down. We'll get this on, and then we can get the front, and then we can start doing the bedsides right after that. Yeah. Hey, Matt had a really good idea. Before we got too far along in the assembly of this truck bed, why don't we go ahead and coat it? Because let's face it, it doesn't get any easier than this nice flat surface like this. It's a brand new bed. It's easy to prep. There's no rust. There's no dents. All we have to do is scuff it up a little bit, give the liner something to bite into, man. And this guy's going to have a brand new looking bed for a long time. Here's the thing, we're never gonna have easier access to the entire bed than we have right now. We can get it every square inch of this thing, walk around and do whatever we gotta do. A couple of other things that are nice too, you know, you think about it, a couple of months from now, this thing could be all nasty. We don't have to clean it. All you gotta do is scuff it, and this is gonna roll on nice and easy. Then we don't have to paint match it either. Yeah, right. it's a nice do-it-yourself kit that's going to keep this thing looking good for a long time. You know, his buddy's really hard on stuff, man. He'll beat this thing up before you know it. It'll look as bad as, well, the one that we, he wanted us to replace. This way it'll look good. He can treat it like a truck and have fun with it, and we can do it quickly and easily. And you know what? Maybe he'll even buy us a cold beverage or two to make up for it, huh? He's usually good for that, so. We got the bed all sanded and prepped. Now we're ready to start applying. So I know what some of you guys are thinking. If you haven't used the bed armor before, you're saying, whoa, they're doing that inside. These guys are going to be on a whole new playing field in about 30 minutes. It's not the case. This is low odor. The other cool thing about it is it's real easy to clean up. It's water-based. So you know what? If it's still wet, if I get it on something that I didn't want it or I get it all over myself, as long as it's still wet, I can clean it up with soap and water and it's nice and easy. Cool thing about the kit is it comes with the brush and the roller. I can get in there with the brush and get the corners and all this, that, the other. Then when I want to pick up the tempo and really speed up the process, I can hit the roller. Well, you, Matt's talking about picking up the tempo. The roller is right. nice, but I think this is going to get it done a whole lot quicker. <laughs> You're right, dude. No, like don't it. worry, because this isn't what you would use to do paint with. It's got a huge tip on the end. It's like a flamethrower, because this is what you use for undercoating. So this way, you've got the, the rubber and the ground-up Black Panther mixed inside here. It'll spray right on. All right, I'm kidding, there's no Black Panther, but there is pieces of rubber, and that's going to give you that nice coating. It's going to be durable and give you a, a bite when you go to step on it, some little traction. So why don't you get out of the way, Here's son, what I'm gonna, yeah. Daddy have at it. Listen, you do your thing, I say. All right.
with all due respect, right? Bruno's the kind of guy that always has to go bigger, better, bolder, faster, this, that, the other. It can get exhausting. Some might say annoying. From Many will say annoying. Time. But in this case, home run, man, because this looks fantastic. I couldn't be happier with this. Well, thank you for the backhanded compliment. <laughs> I think this turned out really nice. You know, you got a nice even spray across this thing. You know, it's, it, was a, it would be a shame not to treat it off the bat because it was a brand new surface to work with. It was easy to start, easy to finish, and it'll stay looking brand new, man. This will get us a lot of uh, brownie points with your buddy. This is good, and like we said, it's like putting a big puzzle together, and it's coming together quick, too, which is nice. And again, just another little reminder, you want to just set everything in there kind of loose, get it in place, and then we can tighten it all down later. The, wall, the sides are up next, and they'll lay on here, and they'll kind of wrap around this corner, and they'll all button up with these captured nuts, and it's just going to go together nice and easy. You got yeah, that that's too? nice, because the captured nuts, you know, it gives you like a free hand. You don't have to fight the other side but trying to get the nut on the bolt. Also, too, you'll notice there's the slots on here give you a little bit of a wiggle room, because some of the stuff might get twisted or tweaked a little in shipping. With the little wiggle room, though, you want to be really careful not to tighten everything down, because you might have to shift it side to side to get it all to line up. So make sure you get every bolt in place before you tighten anything down, because otherwise you might not get that bolt in. There. Perfect. All right, now. Careful, these edges are a little sharp. Yeah, I noticed that. All right, final piece of the puzzle going in on the side. We've got this little slot and groove that this will slide into. Set right on the top. And man, this has come along pretty quickly, man. It's like a grown up erector set. It's kind of fun to do, actually. It is, it is. And to think, how much less time do we have in this? And we've got the bed coating on there and everything. I mean, we did this in practically no time. Yeah, we're about a half a day's worth of work. I mean, could you imagine having to fill all the holes and the rust and all the Bondo on that other one and it would still never turn out this nice. It's a brand new bed. Hey, more power to the guys that can do that, but body work is not our thing, okay? We, we have to admit that every day. Right. So this is the way to go for us, right? This is cool. All right, all we have to do is tighten everything down and then get this out of here. You good on there? Yeah, I think so, man. I know a lot of the younger viewers are not going to believe me when I say this, but there was a time when all the vehicles on the road did not have power windows. Shocker. Now, with this new modern convenience comes other problems when they break, though, right? So who do you call when the power windows check out? Well, you call an LMC truck. Now, if it's for your power windows, they've got everything you need. They've got the motors, they've got the switch, and they've got the complete regulators. Now, they've got everything you need for your trucks, regardless whether it's a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, or GMC dating back to 1947. These guys stock over 30,000 parts on the shelf, and the way you find what you need is you go to the, one of their free catalogs, you find the part number, you get the price, or you go online, and they're going to get it to you quick. Everything you need for an older truck, go to LMC Truck. This is StarTron Enzyme Fuel Treatment. It is designed specifically to deal with all the problems associated with ethanol fuel. Now, you don't realize, but when you fill up at the pump, there's a little sticker there that tells you that your gas has been cut with 10% ethanol. That's yep. fine and dandy if you're going to run that fuel and burn it up within 30 days. The problem happens is the longer that fuel sits, that ethanol starts to deteriorate and tear down your fuel system. You get gum and varnish buildup inside your engine, and it becomes more prominent, especially when you've got smaller engines. The longer it sits, the more buildup you have, and that causes all kinds of problems. If you've ever run that $50 weed eater down to the guy and asked him to clean out the carburetor, he probably will tell you, go ahead and pitch it out and get another one. It's going to be easier and less money. But why do that when you can put some StarTron in there and it's going to keep it running, prevent those buildups, and keep that weed eater going good? The same holds true for your boat. I love this stuff because I love using my boat, but I might only use it twice a year. Now with this, it starts right up. No big smoke bowl at the end of the day. That's nice, and it runs nice and smooth. StarTron, solving the problems of the ethanol fuels. Now this is the Polyrib W Serpentine Belt from Deco Products. Now let's be honest just for a second, shall we? Belts oftentimes do not get the respect that they deserve, and I think it's time for that to change. Especially when your vehicle's nearing that magic 100,000 mile mark, because when the belt goes, so does everything being driven off of it. Now you've got this W Rib profile, which is really important, because it's going to conform to misalignments that might happen with some of the pulleys and stuff on those vehicles. You know, they're going to walk and start losing some of their trueness as the vehicle gets older. This this will account for that and fix those misalignment problems. It's an extended life EPDM compound with aramid noise resistant fibers. And the best part about it to me is it's made right here in the USA. Very, very cool. It's the Polyrib W Serpentine Belt from Deco, and I think it's time these belts start getting the respect they deserve.
For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Oh. And I was a little ambitious to do this job with two people, but you know we made it work. That was that was a <laughs> chore right there, dude. So this is what you were talking about with the bed on bed thing. Yeah, huh? we might have lost you and everybody else yeah. when we were discussing that, but we're using the medium duty truck's bed to haul back the new bed for your buddy to replace his 73 bed. All right, this is cool. All right, it's all clear to me now. I sometimes I check in a little late to the program. You know how that goes, but we need to get this back to him pretty soon. He's well, you know we're calling. really not a hurry though because. We gave him a free bed liner. I said we get some lunch, dude. I'm starving. You know, that's not a bad idea. We can put that on his tab, right? For sure. And I, I you know what? He'd be happy to do it. There's a little choke and puke down the road, dude. Let's go hit that. Nice. Hey, William. Breaker 1-9 good, buddy. You got your ears on? Come on. This is big deal steel trying to reach you, man. You got your ears on? Come on. Man, I don't think it's open, Matt. Yeah, oh, the sign said close. Rules no, don't apply close, to us. I'm, I'm the owner and I want you guys to come in. See, that's, I'm Steve. Uh, all right, Steve, thanks, man. Hey, Steve, rules don't apply to us. See, he knows. <laughs> William, I don't know where you're at, son, but we're going to swing in here and throw some groceries down our throat. We'll get with you soon, man. Out. What did you just say? I told him we were stopping here to grab a bite to eat. Uh, that's the big deal. Why did you just speak English? That's hey no guys, fun. What can I get you? Hey, Steve, what's hey, up? Hey, Steve, I need a Diablo sandwich and Dr. Pepper. Make it snappy. We're in a hurry. B-Man's in a hurry. You got it. Thanks, buddy. I like this place. I like it a lot, too. You know what I mean? Nice. Sorry for the wait. Oh, oh is that <laughs> service. Wow. Man. And you wanted to go to the Olive Garden. Come on. Dude, I don't really. Mm, look at that. You know what? Didn't even touch the silverware. That's Who what needs I'm talking about. Who needs it? Woo! Thanks, Steve. Hey, listen, while we're pulled over, you might want to give me a minute. I think I got a 10-100. That's better than a 10-200. That's true. Yeah. Hey, that's all the time we got. We'll see you guys next week right here on Truck U. You know what? On second thought, it might be a 10-200. Ooh, breaker breaker 1-9. It looks like we got ourselves a log jam. You got any paper or anything I could use? 